weekend and by two negative tests within, you know, a week or a week and a half. If there was re-administration of the substance, you clearly would not see parent compound, you'd see short midterm metabolites, which science has shown would be in existence for several weeks. So again, while unfortunate for John, uh, I think that you know, based on the level of the amount of testing, it's the best evidence that I've seen. I was counting the entities that are testing John right now. I've never in, in the history of my experience of anti-doping in 15, 16 years seen as many entities testing one athlete. It's got the state of California individually on their own tested them at the California event. He's got VADA on behalf of California. He's got the Nevada Commission, which has done some tests um, on their own with an independent collector. He's got Nevada, who has done VADA testing, and then he's got Kasada testing. So five different entities have tested him over the first two months of uh, 2019. Um, there, there's not been another athlete on the planet that's, that's ever had that. But Jeff, to that point, why were only the NSAC tests the one that registered the positives? I mean, are, the, are these tests being applied or measured differently? No, I mean, well, the reality is, well, you have different entities doing the collecting, they're all going to the same laboratory, the Smyrtle, Salt Lake City uh, testing laboratory. Uh, they go to that laboratory, which is a number, so there's nobody at the laboratory that knows that they're looking at John Jones's sample. Um, so when you look at all those facts together and you know, kind of see the layout of these negative, positive, negative, again, it's just it's really solid science evidence of what exactly what they're saying. And how about the dates, the 14th and 15th? As you said, book 